Hi, and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV. So today I wanted to do like a quick overview of the blues genre. And I wanna start this video by saying, I am by no means a blues expert. I like jazz, I like blues, I have kind of like a casual interest in them, but I haven't spent like a lot of time studying it, so this is a little bit out of my area of expertise. But it is a really interesting subject, and I did want to give you kind of like a starting point to start exploring blues music if that's something you're interested in. I created a Spotify playlist to accompany this video, and it has, I think it's about 60 songs or something like that, of various blues pieces that span all the way from like the early 1900s to basically like within a few years. So it's a really diverse playlist and I think it would be a good um, learning point if you wanna get more into this genre. So today's guide is meant to kind of serve as a map. We're gonna go from the early 1900s all the way to modern day and we're gonna talk about how blues music has evolved and all of like the subgenres within it. We're not going to talk like too much detail in any one of these subgenres. That could be like the subject for a future video, but this is more of like an overview. So anyway, let's get started. The first time published music ever used the word blues was in 1908 with the track I Got the Blues. Blues music likely went back further to the late 1800s, but it wasn't documented well, so we don't really know for sure. But the development of the blues coincides with the dissolution of slavery in America. Some famous tunes around this time include, we got Dallas Blues, Memphis Blues, Baby Seals Blues. These, again, these are all gonna be on the playlist if you wanna check them out. Around this time, the first recording by an African-American singer was in 1920, and it was Mamie Smith's version of Crazy Blues. Aside from Memphis, blues started popping up in Texas, Mississippi, and New Orleans around the turn of the century. You had artists like Lead Belly and Henry Thomas, who were the main players in this early blues style. So what exactly is the blues style? Well, blues music is thought to be a blend of European harmonies mixed with call and response music from traditional African music. Blues is also inspired by minstrel shows and ragtime, and ragtime was kind of like developing at the exact same time as blues music. They kind of like evolved together. And blues is also inspired by spirituals. Blues music is the predecessor to many styles we know today, including country music and rock and roll. In the 1920s, blues music written by black people was called race music, and blues music written by white people was called hillbilly music, though they were essentially the same type of music. So anyway, some musical features of blues music can include any of the following. We have blue notes, which are notes that don't appear in like a regular major scale. So that would be like a lowered seventh or a lowered third. You have the use of slide guitar sometimes, um, call and response pattern, which is kind of like a, like a vocal pattern. And then you had these repetitive chord patterns, generally in 12 bars. If you've heard of 12 bar blues, that should be familiar to you. And then oftentimes an AAB lyrical pattern. So you'd have two lines that were pretty much exactly the same. And then the third line would be something different. W.C. Handy claimed to be himself the father of the blues, and he definitely did help popularize blues music. His style blended ragtime and jazz, and he also used orchestras and bands to accompany the singers. By the 1920s, the success of Hardy, as well as some talented women performers, helped break blues music into the mainstream, into pop culture. Blues was now being performed in Memphis bars, and record companies began to record it. At this time, we had two main types of blues music emerge. We had country blues, which was often as simple as vocals in a banjo or guitar, and it was more improvisational in style. Style. Urban blues, which we'll talk about in a moment, were more polished. Country blues at this time had some variations. So we had the Mississippi Delta blues, which used the slide guitar to accompany passionate vocals. We had the Piedmont blues, which echoed ragtime music, except on the guitar instead of the piano. And then we had blues from Georgia, which also used the slide guitar a lot. The Memphis blues style featured more unusual instruments like the fiddler washboard. The famous performer Memphis Minnie was known for being a guitar virtuoso, and Memphis Slim was a pianist with some swing style mixed in with his blues. Urban blues tended to be more elaborate than country blues simply because urban audiences tended to have higher standards. In the 1920s, female urban singers were very popular, such as Gertrude Ma Rainey, who was known as the mother of the blues, Bessie Smith, and Lucille Bogan. Lucille Hageman became the second black woman to record the blues, and these albums were purchased by people of 
all races. These women brought plenty to the blues genre. They brought dramatic vocals, they would often use things like shouts and moans, and they brought more improvised and interesting melody vocal lines. In the 1920s, there were also some prominent men contributing to the blues genre, including the guitar wizard Tampa Red, we had Big Bill Brunzi, and Leroy Carr. Boogie Woogie is a specific style that grew out of urban blues music in the 1930s and 1940s. This was a very piano-heavy style, often featured featuring solo piano, but it was also a style that was used to accompany singers and bands. Boogie Woogie used a specific type of bass line on the piano with lots of embellishments and decoration in the right hand. Some famous artists, including the one I have on the screen here, is Jimmy Jansen, we had Pine Top Smith, and others. Another outcrop of urban blues was big band blues. This is exactly what it sounds like. Groups of 10 plus musicians featuring saxophone, lots of brass, and percussion. Everyone's heard of Glenn Miller's In The Mood, which is a famous big band tune, but there's also quite a few other famous artists in this category who you can find on the playlist, including Benny Moten Orchestra and Jimmy Rushing. Jump blues grew out of boogie woogie and big band music. You use saxophone, brass, rhythm guitar, and the effect is really upbeat and jazzy. And this music would then go on to influence rock and roll music. Some jump blues artists are Louis Jordan, Big Joe Turner, and T. Bone Walker. After World War II, African Americans and Americans in general started having more money. And this money meant that African Americans began moving all across the United States instead of just kind of like staying in the South. And another consequence of African Americans having more money is that the music industry started to cater to them actually a little bit more. And instead of the music, like blues music being referred to as race music, it switched to the much more appropriate rhythm and blues categorization. This is also the time period where we started to see a shift to more electrical instruments. Electric blues was popular in Chicago, Memphis, Detroit, and St. Louis. So in addition to using electric guitars, these bands also used bass. It originally would have been the double bass, but then it later changed to the electric bass, drums, and harmonica, which was amplified. Blues music coming from Chicago at the time in the late 1940s was heavily inspired by the Delta blues style because a lot of these musicians had migrated from Mississippi to Chicago. Muddy Waters and Elmore James were especially known for using slide guitar. And Muddy Waters is, of course, famous for his really gravelly voice. Around this time, there were some other famous names. You can kind of see them here. This will all be over on the blog, too, if you want these lists for your own research purposes or listening purposes as well. In the 1950s, Chicago blues evolved in the hands of Bo Diddley and Chuck Berry into something more upbeat and enthusiastic. Blues music started moving away from the sad, melancholy sound of past blues music. When Muddy Waters toured England, he ignited a love of electric blues in his audience. This would then go on to influence musicians in the British invasion, such as the Rolling Stones and the Yardbirds. A couple notable musicians from this subgenre would be Alexis Corner and Cyril Davies. Back in America in the late 1950s, Chicago blues continued to evolve, and this newer West Side sound featured expressive guitar solos and a really strong backing rhythm. This is the genre that brought you Magic Sam, Otis Rush, and Buddy Guy, among many others. In the late 1950s, a subgenre called Swamp Blues developed near Baton Rouge. This style was largely influenced by Jimmy Reed of the earlier Chicago Blues style. The biggest difference between Swamp Blues compared to the earlier Chicago blues style is that it's just a little bit slower and simpler. So this is where we have Slim Harpo, Sam Myers, and others. By the 1960s and 70s, rock and roll music and soul music were completely in the mainstream. And because of this, blues music as a genre began to kind of dissipate into other it kind of just like started spreading out into different but related genres. This is the era we got B.B. King, who is known for his sophisticated guitar solos and use of vibrato. This music also differed from Chicago blues in that it used more brass and sax again, kind of like 
uh, big band as opposed to using the slide guitar and harmonica. Because of the civil rights movement, Americans developed a newfound interest in traditional blues, and this led to a lot of republishing of older records by guys like Skip James. It also led to performers bringing this older acoustic style into their newer blues music, and a notable album from this revival would be Alabama Blues. Across the pond, British blues were taking off and evolving in the hands of famous bands like the Rolling Stones and Cream. These groups not only incorporated blues into their styles, but they also covered and recorded and performed old blues songs in the Delta and Chicago style. These British musicians from the early 1960s influenced American performers like The Doors and Jefferson Airplane. These were the famous musicians who then went on to influence modern rock music as we know it today. That includes artists like The Doors, Canned Heat, Jefferson Airplane, Janis Joplin, All Man Brothers Band, and Jimi Hendrix. Once we hit the 1970s, a new subgenre of blues emerged, the Texas rock blues. This style was heavily influenced by the British rock blues, and these up-and-comers would maybe not be quite so popular in the 70s, but they would really hit the spotlight in the 1980s, and that includes Johnny Winter, Stevie Ray Vaughan, the fabulous Thunderbirds, and ZZ Top. In the Deep South in the 1980s, interest in the blues re-emerged. This subgenre, soul blues, is much more well-known and widespread among African-American audiences compared to Caucasian audiences. This is where you have guys like ZZ Hill and Little Milton. That's not to say that blues music is dead. There are lots of modern day blues musicians who are still thriving and existing. Especially nowadays, people have access to all kinds of music because of the internet, so niche genres ha can have really devoted fan bases and followings. Another genre that has emerged from the blues is alternative rock blues. With these musicians, you can really hear their blues influence, and this includes bands like ZZ Ward, Cage the Elephant, Jack White, and the Black Keys. In the 1980s, Texas-based Stevie Ray Vaughan began exploding in popularity, and you had John Lee Hooker, who continued to stay relevant. He had an album in 1989 called The Healer, and then Eric Clapton of Cream, of course, was perpetuating blues music as well, and he released an acoustic unplugged album, which had a lot of blues covers, like old blues covers. But the problem with the 80s and 90s was, was music started to move away from kind of that like raw, live, improvised sound to more of like a rehearsed studio recording sound. Music just became much more synthesized and less organic. And since blues was, you know, raw, improvised, organic, all of these things, it kind of just ended up falling by the wayside in the 80s and 90s. So there it is, there's your roadmap to the blues. Hopefully you find this a little bit helpful. And as mentioned, I did create a Spotify playlist for this whole video. So I encourage you to go check that out, it'll be linked below and in the associated blog post. You'll find all that in the description bar. Feel free to check me out, us out on social media if you want, that'll all be linked at the end below. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. This is also the time period where we start the Memphis Blue Sky and Cyril Davies. Cyril. Cyril.